What's going on everybody? Hey, we're getting ready to make a diaper changing table for Harrison. And when Gina and I were thinking of different themes for the baby room, we both agreed on one thing, adventure inspired ideas. We talked about traveling, exploring and discovering. And because you can go so many different directions with that, we had to narrow it down a little bit, especially for the big items like the diaper changing table. So we both like industrial vintage, old looking furniture. And we were like, you know what, if we're gonna design this thing, we might as well design it in a way where if he no longer needs it, maybe we can use this for some other things like an end table or storage shelf or something. So for inspiration, what we came up with was the idea to make something look like a workbench that you might see in an old airplane hangar. It had to be rough and tough, a military grade machine table, capable of withstanding the rigorous harsh environment of dirty diaper manufacturing. Equipped with all the mechanical instruments required for surgical precision within a second's reach. All of which is an absolute necessity if you want to master the art of the diaper changing technique. Diapers, check. Wet wipes, check. Rash cream, check. Hazmat suit, Oh, no. So let's get started. Gina found these plywood panels at Lowe's and they're really cool because they're already um, pieces of wood glued together and clamped into place and they were about $18 or so. Uh, originally I was going to just buy a bunch of these wood planks and then um, use like a biscuit joiner or something, glue them all together, clamp them, wait for them to dry, but this was actually not only more work, but a way more expensive thing for us to do. I think it was going to come to like $200 for me to do something like this versus just buying three of these, and it's going to be a lot faster for us. I went ahead and bought these pieces because they're going to be the outer perimeter of the changing table that's going to box in the cushion itself, and then a little... Um, area for diapers or wipes or whatever all right so for each one of the shelves we kind of wanted to have this thing look as if it had a palette type of look to it now if you guys have access to a palette or something you could just rip the boards off and cut it we kind of wanted to go with new wood just because it's cleaner easier for us to stain and then you don't have to worry about any kind of chemicals or weird stuff that maybe was on the palette that you found this was two dollars and 55 cents at the box store and then you obviously have to take some time to cut it out but hey it's kind of fun right i could cut this whole thing out with a jigsaw if you do have access to a chop saw though it's nice because the more you cut with the chop saw the straighter your cuts will be sometimes a jigsaw blade has a tendency to flex and so even though you're lined up on this side on the other side you'll be in a little bit to figure out our width for this 19 and a half we kind of just measured the um, the little cushion the little changing pad that you can get at babies r us Cool, so I got both of these cut and I'll sand it and stuff. And then now, um, before I glue it to my wood shelf, because these factory edges are kind of rounded, I'm gonna go ahead and take like, like an eighth of an inch off in the table saw. So I'll carefully do that. I don't have this wood in here anymore to guide me, so I just kind of have to freehand it. That'll give me a nice straight flat edge to glue and clamp down to my wood shelf. So see the difference? It's a little bit more of a square edge than the than the rounded edge over here. We wanted to give the wood an old worn look, so I got out my grinders with a wire brush and a palm sander and I tried to knock down as much of the soft wood grain in between the harder wood grain as I could so it felt and looked like it was raised and aged over the years. So if you guys want to know more about how I created that wood grain effect, there's a link in the description. I just wanted to show you guys that it also does work on 2x4s and 2x6s. You can see it raised it pretty well, even on the end grain there. So, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Okay, well, I got the sides all shot and clamped into place. I used some wood glue. You guys could uh, screw this into place or just hammer some nails in there to give it like more of a palette authentic look. Here's the very top piece. Uh, the um, changing pad's going to be right here. And then we'll have a couple little sections for... Um, some diapers and uh, wipes or whatever. I added an inch and a half to the width of this thing just so the shelves below are a little bit bigger. I will have to add a couple little three quarter inch pieces of wood on each side just so the pad doesn't move back and forth. The next step is to cut 
this outside edge it's um some one by eights and i'm going to cut the outside edge on here out of those miter the corners and use a biscuit joiner all right you guys are looking at the bottom side of the very top the actual part that the uh changing cushion will be sitting on this is the underside i ripped some uh, two inch strips for support and i have those down there now i'm going to flip this thing over and attach the sidewalls You can see on this end piece here how I just drew out the areas that it's going to be glued to other pieces of wood. Like this piece is going to have a little biscuit joint there. So you um, just have to stay in the line. And I really like this angle grinder because you have so much control and you can go real slow. It's like a fancy little coloring book only with a wire brush. You just stay in the little lines. Ooh, oh, oh, not too much there. Oh, ooh, ooh. All right, so I got this thing all nailed together and I did a messy job with the glue. Luckily, Jean is painting this with a watered down uh, brown and black latex paint, so it's not like stain where it's gonna be affected. But man, if we were gonna stain this, Christopher did a horrible job. Jeez. I, I walked away and went and got a beer. <laughs> I came back and the glue was dry. I was like, dang it. I also rounded over these edges so that my metal legs, you can see that it's kinda got a little round edge there in the corner. So that way it'll fit nice and tight when I go to uh, bolt the legs on. But yeah, I'm gonna do a quick little sand and then we'll be ready for paint. Because Jean is using a latex paint, she's real careful to make sure she paints with the grain. Then once this is dried, she applies a polyacrylic satin clear coat. These legs are about 38 inches long. Uh, it's two inch angle steel. Okay, so while the paint is drying on the wood pieces inside, I have started drilling my holes in my four legs. Uh, I've got this as my little pre-drill set. I'm gonna use 3 8 hardware, so then I'm gonna go over to this drill press to drill the uh, 3 8 holes in all these right here. If you guys don't have a drill press, you can always use one by hand. Just takes a little longer. All right, I got all the holes drilled, and then afterwards, I had a little bit of, you know, burred edges and stuff, so I took a uh, polishing wheel on my grinder and got rid of all that stuff. Then I uh, sanded everything, took some acetone, cleaned off all the grease and dust. Now I'm gonna take some of this metallic spray paint uh, and primer and do a coat of this, make it look all nice. Uh, a lot of times in these projects, we've always left it uh, like the metal look. I won't grind and sand it and I'll just put some clear coat over it. That way it kind of gives it that steel industrial look. But because we made some other shelves in his bedroom that uh, we used this primer on, so we're just gonna try to tie it all together. It definitely looks like a, like a, a spray paint versus natural steel. Regardless though, if you were gonna just leave it steel, you would need to spray some clear on there so it doesn't rust. All right, here's the finished product. Yeah. Wood green turned out nice. Woo wee! Look at all that storage space below. Countersunk all the hardware on top so that it wouldn't interfere with any material or any of those little pesky flailing baby limbs. You put the diapers in here, you can put all your wet wipes and your creams and stuff. Then the mat fits in here just perfect. Gina found this really cool airplane aviation mat cover for it kind of go with our theme. I also added this little three quarter inch lip here around the inside edge so that we could just set a top right down inside and make a flat workspace in the future. We were originally gonna use some really cool old used ammo cans from the Army Surplus Store, but they were way too pricey, so we ended up finding some metal bins at Walmart for much less. Here it is all set up. You see all the little cubbies? Look at all that storage space. One thing about it, I don't have to worry about Harrison ever climbing up on it and knocking it over because this thing is so heavy, I can barely lift it. I mean, shoot, this thing's strong enough to hold the both of us. I mean, my son's gonna be able to change my diaper on it someday. Oh, Harrison. <laughs> Time to get you back, old buddy. 
<laughs> hey, you never know. Just depends. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. Hey, please tell us what you think of this project. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Ooh, P.U. I'm going to need some new britches.